to another episode of It Belongs in a Museum, to which you should all recite together. So do you! So that's how we're going. David Brownlee is here. Hello, hello. Matthew Vincent is here. Hello, good to see you. Hola, as you said, Matthew. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I do apologize for about the hour... Um, the hour later start than we normally do. Um, it is spring break, and uh, it is also uh, my son's mom's weeks, so I just figured I would wait until she came to pick him up um, to go ahead and start. So that happened a few minutes ago. So here we are. And that's what we're gonna do. Nuno Rebello is here. Uh, Jessie is here as well. She is literally in the other room watching the show. Uh, gonna chat with you people. So that's how that goes. From the living room, she says. Just on the other side of this door. That's right over there. So that is that. I don't know why. Hmm. She could just be in here. Unless... She do you want to come in here? I don't care if you do. I will, but let me eat first. She's eating. That's what she says. So maybe she'll join us later on. Um, so that'll be cool. All right, she's eating. All right, we'll let her eat. That's no problem. You can eat. It's fine. It's good. It's all good. So, <coughs> from my office, Nuno says, well, 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 Mr. Fancy Pants. All right, well, it has been a bit of a morning. Not a bad morning, just just a morning. Um, the other two kids are in California right now. They're going to Disneyland. Such a bad thing, right? Um, they are going to Disney World with, or no, I'm sorry, Disneyland. I would, here's the problem. I don't care which one is which, but in order for you to know exactly where they are, yeah. Anyway, uh, they're with the band. They're not just alone. They're with like 50 other, 48 other kids and various and sundry uh, chaperones and the band leader and color guards, coaches and so forth. Uh, anyway, they're going to be there for a while. Um... Watch out for the dino skeleton. Watch out for the dino skeleton. No eating in the museum. That is correct. There's no eating in the museum. Thank you, David, for backing backing me up. And she just she just chirped from the uh, from the kitchen. That's why I'm eating in here. So there you go. Uh, watch out for the dino skeleton. I don't know what that means, Nuno. Um, all right. Are you maybe talking about the, the, the people, the, the kids and being in California? That's probably what it is. Paul O'Farrell is from his house. <coughs> uh, oh, you know what? Could you bring me a coffee in when you come? Yeah. Yes, cool. Because I'm missing my coffee. I don't know where it is. I'm pretty sure it's out there. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Uh, from the night... Oh, the dino... Okay, the dino skeleton from the night at the museum movie. All right. That's a good show. That's good. I like it. I like it. Good. Good drawback. Good. I like that. I just didn't catch it. I apologize. A little bit off my game this morning. So, that's all right. I am doing some stuff. It's pretty cool. It's Having... You know, not having, when you take normal things out of your week, it throws you off. At least it does for me. So I'm used to uh, getting up at a certain time, getting the kids, uh, you know, at least, you know, one or two of the kids' lunch uh, breakfast is done, and uh, then heading out the door to take them to school, and then doing this and doing that, and then coming back, and when you take some of that stuff out, it just throws you off. And that's where I'm at right now. So I apologize if I'm a little scattered. 
uh, Strider is underneath the table. He currently has his paw on my foot. I don't know why he did that. Don't know if I got the name right. Uh, yeah, uh, from Night at the Museum. Yeah, Night at the Museum is correct. Is the correct name. That's a great movie. Um, uh, first one was better than the second one, in my opinion. But uh, second one wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I just enjoyed the first one better. That's all. Uh, so. What are we doing here? Well, here's the thing. Night, uh, <laughs> Night at the Museum, no. It Belongs in a Museum is a, is a series uh, in which uh, I will take a couple of games, uh, usually just two, off of the shelf, uh, my own personal collection shelf, and talk about why it's here, why it's still in my collection, uh, maybe even a little bit of, of why it's part of this series. It Belongs in a Museum doesn't necessarily mean that it is a very old game and that it has been drawing dust for a long time. That's not what it really means. Um, it, it really just means that, um, well, it can mean that. Other times, one of the games that we're going to talk about today even is not an old game per se. I think it came out in um, 2018. So it's really only um, about six years old, which isn't incredibly old at all. Now, if you are a cult of the new, that is ancient. <laughs> I try not to be cult of the new, and I'm trying to do a little bit of pulling back from cult of the new. So this isn't a really old game, but I think it's one that has been criminally overlooked um, because... You'll see in a little bit, production quality, off the charts. Um, why is it overlooked? Hmm, that depends. Some people think, uh, and, and, and I can see where this is, this game has like everything. No, I do not want to do a software update right now. Cancel. Uh, uh, be installed later tonight. Okay, fine. Just don't do it now. Stupid Max. <clears throat> this game that we're going to talk about, one of them is, uh, one of them is from 2006. And it has been implemented, uh, it re-implemented a game. It has been re-implemented by two games. Um, so it's been done and done again. And I've been seeing some uh, ads around the interwebs that it is getting a revised edition this year. So um, <clears throat> that should kind of tell you one of the reasons, one of the games we're talking about, I think it, it, you know, um, it, it's, it's not necessarily an old game, but it was a criminally overlooked game, and I still have it in my shelf, and I think it's a great game, and I think it's uh, great production quality, all of this kind of stuff. The other one... Um, I think fits into the series because it has been around for quite some time, almost 20 years. Uh, we're, we're talking 18 years at this point. Um, and um, it, uh, it re-implemented a game, and it has been re-implemented by uh, another game that really, in my opinion, wasn't as good as this version. Uh, and then got re-implemented by a second edition of the game that it re-implemented. <laughs> so, um, I think it belongs because it's part of that line. I think there's a lot of legacy that's there. Um, and, and so that's why we're going to talk about that. All right, so first things first, kind of explain what we're doing here today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first one is from a company called Final Frontier Games. And... Uh, the thing that really jumped out at me first about this was the theme. Uh, when this game came out, there had been a few games that used the same theme, but I didn't. I just didn't feel like it. It uh, worked well, and I thought the theme really worked well in this one. I think it's. I think the theme's been carried in in, in another game a, a little bit better um, and a little bit more family friendly. Uh, this one is a three point six seven. We're talking a heavy game. Um, really, it's about 0.17 outside of my wheelhouse. Usually, I only like to go up to about 3.5. And that's and if it goes over that, now, again, 
these numbers are really kind of arbitrary because um, the complexity rating on the Board Game Geek um, is it, kind of strange. But if you look at it with a pinch of salt, then you kind of get the you, you, you kind of can use it to your advantage. Well, this game is rated this highly, and this game over here is rated this highly, and and you've played both of those games, and you kind of can feel, get a sense for what the geek is telling you. That's kind of how you use it. You don't really use it as an as a as a empirical method of of choosing your complexity, but it gives it puts you in the right camp. It puts you in the right ballpark. I'll put it that way. So 3.67. This is definitely uh, uh, on the lower end of a heavy euro. Uh, on the lower end of the heavy euro, and it is Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Now, Robin Hood and the Merry Men. This is a heavy box, and I just noticed that I need to uh, correct something, so we will do that. Uh, everything's going to be a little bit askew inside, but I need to do that because now it, the front of the box and the back of the box matches. So, Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Um, what have we got going on here? Well... It's exactly what it what it sounds like, and uh, I'll just I'll just read the back. Robin Hood and the Merry Men is a semi cooperative. That might be another reason why it was criminally overlooked. Semi cooperative games can be really polarizing, at least from my experience. Some people really like them, and somebody really hate them. Some people really hate them, and that and the reason for that I think is because of that that um, we're all working together, but only one person can win type of thing. That doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Um, unlike with cooperative games, we all win together, we all lose together. Or with competitive games, you know, there's only one winner, but that's normal. Here, you have to work together, but there can only be one winner. That, that might be one of the reasons why. But uh, it is a semi-cooperative but highly competitive board game set in the folklore we all know and love. It's a thematic Euro-style game that perfectly blends worker placement, hand management, set collection, dice rolling into one big exciting crossover. All four of those mechanisms are big winners for me in my book. Uh, so players take on the role of the famous outlaws such as Robin Hood, Little John, Will Scarlet, Maid Marian, and Jane Fortune, and their mission is to protect the town of Nottingham from the tyranny of the infamous ruler Prince John and the notorious Sheriff of Nottingham throughout five rounds of onslaught. If they succeed, there's, there's the cooperative nature of it. If they succeed, a winner is declared. The player with the most victory points becomes Nottingham's greatest champion. Uh, so there you have it. So it's a co semi-cooperative game, which is really probably why most of its woes, have, where most of its woes have come from. But it is a fantastic production. As you can see, the artwork is incredibly good. Uh, the Miko. Um, uh, Mihailo uh, Dmitrievsky, Dmitrievsky, Mihailo Dmitrievsky. Uh, you you know his work. Um, all of the uh, Garfield games have been using. Well, I don't know if all of them are, but the very popular ones all use his work. Um, so there you got it. Uh, there are three different game modes. There is semi-cooperative. There is also fully co-op. But the game is a semi-cooperative game. Um, at its root. There is also a solo mode. This is something that I forgot about um, because back when I was playing this game, I was not a fan of, of solo solo play, but now it is something that I, I fancy, at least for certain reasons. But let's go ahead and get down to the table. Now, there have been some things that I have added uh, to this. For example, I think this was... Uh, a file that was on the geek. I, I printed it out uh, front and back, and um, then uh, what do you call it? Uh, put plastic over it. What do you call that? I don't remember. Anyway, these are player aids, and you're like, what? Those are player aids? Yeah, it's a complete eight by ten, <laughs> um, and uh, front and back, and these are player aids, and it's basically just it, it's it, it's a lot more than it actually looks like, but. It uh, pretty much puts everything in order for you. Uh, the Merriman phase, the hero phase, 
and then uh, all of these different things. So again, it, there, it looks like a lot more, but it just kind of spells everything out for you. Here is the rule book. And as you can see, it is a fairly thick rule book. And uh, we're talking about uh, 27 pages worth, but you see that there's a lot of icons and, and task cards and so forth, hero abilities, Friar Tuck modules, uh, the uh, den module, uh, and so game end is actually talked about on 23. Uh, but you kind of get the idea that there's just a lot going on in this game. Uh, it's one of those kinds of uh, everything in the kitchen sink type of games, and it's cool. There's a lot of those coming out recently. Um, Garfield Games have been putting a lot of those out, and it really has a very similar uh, um, production quality to all of those. So there's just a lot of stuff going on in this in this uh, game. Here's a little bit of a picture for this setup. So you can see the board there is pretty. I'll give you a, a better look up of the, of the board later on. But look at all of the different mechanisms. I'm sorry, uh, all of the different components that are here. So um, really cool. So that's the rule book. Uh, here is full co-op and solo mode rule books. So little changes to the game. Uh, so two different modes that are here. Um, so you've got four pages, not that big. Um, I also have the deluxe components for the game as well. So this kind of just tells you uh, what you have for that. Starting off with the player boards, check those out. Double layered player boards. Uh, you can see the double layers there, so little things can sit inside of these, and uh, you're, you're pretty good to go there. So that's all of the different player boards um, right here. Um, then you have the uh, uh, player aids that actually come in the game, um, and, you know, they, they have good information on them, but... Uh, the other ones are a little bit more explanatory that I printed out. So here we go. We'll get to the rest of those, but here's the board. And again, uh, I'm telling you guys, this is a, it's a large footprint. It's not small at all, but you can see the board and it's super busy, right? Um, let me get this stuff out of the way so it'll lay flat. Boom. All right. So as you can see, a lot of stuff going on. Here's the castle area, and you've got these different roads that are coming in. Uh, some more roads up at the top as well. And these are ways that you can uh, uh, get into these different gates, the north, east, south, and west gates. Um, and uh, once you get in, there's different things you can do. Go to archery competitions, you can uh, uh, do a number of different things, fight guards and all of this kind of stuff. So so much going on in the game. Um, this is one of the other cool things about the game. Custom dice. And these are nice engraved dice. These aren't stickered or anything like that. So these are really nice looking dice. So we'll put those out there uh, like so. Um, what do I want to go over next? Now, I told you I did get the... Uh, deluxe components and so these were pretty cool as well oh man I hate these when they have small lips on them but anyway these are all of the cool uh, you have some some uh, basically some mead bottles here you have wood over here hammers stone uh, like so so <clears throat> those are all of the different little um, uh, things that we have here, so that's pretty neat. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. No, I won't stay. I'm going to let you do your fireside chat. Why? Ooh, it's your this thing. This isn't fireside. This is your side. It's your thing. No, it's fine. Have a seat. Yeah, yeah get your... uh I'll get my stuff. Get your... Um, what you call it? Hold on. Hold on, everyone. There. Here. Go. Get your mic set up. I'll just sit in the corner so it's not in the way. I don't think oh, you have the camera on you. I'd have to sit next to you. Yep, you do. A terrible thing. I'm kidding. Okay. 
Here's your mic. Or I'll man the chat for you. Um, you want to do that? No, I don't care. Sit over here. Yeah, do that. Here, you put this on. See, we have a whole little system we have to do. Well, kind of. Like this, I go this way. Can you get I past? Mean, I mean. Yeah, right. See, I'm not here. Right. Can you hand me my tea? Yep. You gotta hand me my coffee though. <laughs> Fine. All right. So, put it back to camera one. There you go. You gotta say hi. Hi. I'm not ready yet. I have cords and wires. She's putting her <coughs> stuff on. So we'll get that going. So anyway, let me see. Let me put all these different things out here. I don't want to separate all of them because that'll just take too long. But okay, go ahead and put us back to uh, camera two. And then this is the button for picture uh, in picture? On. The on. On. There you go. All right. <clears throat> so that kind of gives you an idea there. I'll put that there and put that over there so I remember what bag goes over. And then here's one of the really cool the things. Chat. Huh? The chat's not there. You got to go here and there. Thanks. There we go. Dust it off top. Top Secret Spies last week, Spirit of the Jars 86, very light but still fun, cool. I would think that semi-co-op would have replay issues since everyone already knows your dirty tricks and filthy lies the next time around. Laminate, there's the word I was looking for. <laughs> all right, also has all of these components here. So that's the King Richard. Um, I can't remember what, who he is. Um, there's Prince John. Uh, that's the sheriff, I think, and I don't know who this dude is. He was, um, one of the, just one of the other big bad guys. But anyway, he, these are a bunch of little soldier meeples that the game comes with as well. And then a metal first player marker, which is really neat because it has like, uh, Robin Hood on one side and then... It's got another Robin Hood on the other. So it's got the same thing on both sides, but it's a really neat metal coin. That is the first player token. But on top of that, this is where it gets really cool. I also have the <coughs> metal coins. Oh, that's cool. The metal coins. And these are like really neat looking. And this gets lost in it, so you have to keep it separate. But... Um, these metal coins are really nice looking. Um, I don't know if they're, they're, they can't be period specific, but they look like they could be. But these are just really nice. And so it's just a really neat thing there. Then there's more. These are all of the little uh, player pieces and they come in uh, five different colors. So you've got blue, red, purple, yellow, and my favorite is green. And these are all of the these are all of the player pieces for uh, for green. And you can basically uh, understand that these are like little traps, and these are like little uh, barriers. This is a little hat that stands for your your uh, um, your points, I believe, and I don't know what the acorn's for, I can't remember, but you have all of this stuff in here, and the production quality is off the freaking charts. I just can't, uh, explain to you how nice the components are, uh, for this game. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, all of the wooden pieces were not part of the, uh, deluxe pack. Let me see. Let me make sure of that before I say anything. No, yeah, okay. So in the deluxe pack, these little guys here were just like sticks of wood. And then the bear traps were discs. And then all of the cubes here got changed into all of these things over here. Uh, so that was the extent of the deluxe components. Um, so these were a separate purchase. They were... Uh, 
cardboard coins instead. But anyway, that's that. Then you also have uh, some tiles here. Not, not incredibly uh, thing, but you also got a bunch of cards as well. Uh, and there's other cards for uh, King Richard's return and decrees and stuff like that. So those were put out. And then you have different kinds of cards for when you're entering the gates and when you have to fight and all that other kind of stuff. And then you have different kinds of uh, victory point cards, I believe is what these are. Um, these are, uh, yeah, these are different uh, workers that you can basically have in your, your uh, <coughs> thing that will get you different kinds of victory points at the end. And so uh, that's what all of these guys did. And all of the art, there's, there's uh, similar art on some of them, but there's also a lot of different kinds of art there. Like, for example, these are the two, these are the two uh, same kinds of dudes here, but they do a little bit different down here. So it's stuff like that. But the art is just really good in this. I like I like that style. It's not my favorite style, but I do like it. I think it's it's cool. Um, then we have the different hero cards that are here. These are the heroes are denoted. And again, I have some extra ones than what come in the base game. But you've got Robin Hood, Maid Marian, Little John, Will Scarlet, um, Jane Fortune. Um, Alan Adale, then you have Much the Miller's Son, these are, these are, these came in this, Roberta of Loxley, hmm, Arthur Achu, and Barbara Florence, and those came in the, uh, deluxe components, as denoted right down there at the bottom, boom, boom, boom. Nuno you know, says, I do like them. I do like metal coins. Yeah, metal coins are really cool. Now, <coughs> in case that weren't enough, I'll put all these back. You also had little wagons that are in the game as well. <laughs> Little wagons that are in the game of well, and and these are basically things that are trying to uh, make its way along these uh, paths, uh -huh. these routes, so they could start start and and they're going to click in uh, at different points throughout the thing. The different colors stood for for different things that uh, you had to do to stop them, but uh, also comes with that little bag there, and then you also had uh, a purse of other kinds of tokens that are in here that you could uh, pick through uh, at certain points during the game. Um, but another bag as well. The insert also well-designed, functional, not flashy of course, but functional. Holds everything and uh, keeps it from, you know, uh, moving around too much. But that's, uh, hand me the box cover. That is Robin Hood and the Merry Men from Final Frontier. Uh, it was produced in, what was it again? 2018. But, and this is why I haven't played it with you yet. <laughs> I'm fine with that. 3.67. Okay. <laughs> uh, hour and a half playing time? I don't know about that. That might be a little short on, might be a little short on the trigger. You okay over there? I am. My eyes just haven't uh, go functioned ahead and put yet. Put us back to uh, the p camera one. Yeah, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. Did you wink at the same time though? No, I didn't. You have to. Cause, oh, I I wasn't. You're no, okay, I wasn't doing that. Camera two. Right. Camera one. That's camera cool. Two. All right. So uh, while I am. <coughs> Packing some of this up because this is one of the games where we really can't just throw it back in the box. I do have to pack this up. So, any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, Jesse will uh, will will voice your concerns, and we'll go from there. But I do have to pack this up because there is a lot of stuff in this box. I have to make sure it gets back. And in. it all fits in there. Huh? And it all fits. Yeah, it does. That's nice. It does all fit. That's nice. 
So let's see, that's that. Put this here. Um, cards are easy. Just me. Yeah. That. That. Uh oh. I forgot these. Um. Yeah. I have to put these under here, I think. That's going to have to go to another. We'll go over here like that. There. That fit well. Um, I might even do that. <clears throat> Got anybody else saying nothing? Saying nothing. Nobody's saying nothing? Nobody's saying nothing. And it's because they're watching in such riveting. That's not true. It's not, this is not riveting. Okay, that's there. And then these guys go in here. Oh, that's a lot of ice. Yeah, it is. Really cool. All right. That's nice and flat again. These have to go back in here. This is going to sound snobby. But I prefer playing games with the bling and upgrades. I mean, I, I, I do too. I it, mean, it, it definitely adds a different level to the game. Yeah, it does. Like playing with metal coins versus cardboard, cardboard tokens. Yeah. yeah, totally different. Yep. I totally agree with that, and I don't think it's snob. I really don't. Um, now that might be because I'm I'm agreeing with you. But I don't think it's snobbery because um, I'm of the opinion, and I always have been, that games that look good are more fun to play. Um, sure. And I just, I really believe that because the aesthetic component of games is important to me. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I know they are for other people too. I mean, if, if, if there weren't some truth to the statement that it's just more fun to play, if there weren't some truth to the every statement... Every box would look the same. Every box would look the same. Every box... The, you know, artists would not have uh, any say in the matter or anything like that. It would just be, uh, a, you know, a black and white chips and a checkered board, you know? Um, so I, I, I do think that there's a lot of truth that kind of sentiment. It's not just snobbery. Tim also says it adds a tactile to the game, increasing better gameplay. Yep. I totally agree with you. Yep, yep, yep. I do too. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't remember where that one goes. So we're going to try to find a piece for it. Uh, we're probably just going to put it right there. And then this. All right, we're almost done, actually. I like, I mean, uh, yeah. Let's see. It adds a tactile, yeah, tactile, yeah, increasing better gameplay, totally. Yeah, yeah totally agree. Totally. All right. These are a couple of heavier games that I don't know that. Yeah, it's a little above me. <laughs> well, I don't think it's above you. I just don't think you'll enjoy it. I mean, honestly. Well, when they get above me, I get a little, uh, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't like it. Yeah. So it's kind of a combination. They're kind of above my level, and then that decreases my enjoyment of the game. I, I go, I don't like it. All right. Well, that is that for all of these things. And then this will go in here. And the board folds up. Oh, nice. And goes in here like that. And then, come on. I chose these two games, and as I was thinking about it, I was like, oh no.
because and do they each have a bunch? Yeah, they oh, both they have a lot of <laughs> they both have a lot of components, and they're both kind of of the of the way of uh, you have to put them back in there a certain way, so or it won't it's just fit. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. it won't fit. So it's just the way it is. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. So that was that. Um, let's put it down here. Um, the next one, don't put it out yet. Okay. Funny enough, I still have this one in shrink from the Kickstarter. Don't even know if I have the deluxe or not. Oh, man. Orestes, what are you doing, my brother? Uh, it's, a, it's a really fun game. Now, it does have a lot going on. And it is semi-cooperative, but it does have a full co-op mode. So if you're not a fan of the semi-cooperative, just play the full co-op module and it'll be cool if you got the kickstarter i would imagine that you have the deluxe stuff in there but i don't know for sure because if you still have it in shrink that tells me that it's shrinked around the box and if you only have one box then you might not have all of those deluxe components in there but don't know um all right so the next one, uh, I talked about this a little bit. This is from, this is the older game of the two. This is from 2006. So we're talking 18 years old. Um, now, it re-implemented a game called Wallenstein. Or Wallenstein, or however you pronounce that, Wallenstein. Uh, it was re-implemented by another game called Immortals, which I don't think it was as good. Uh, and then Wallenstein 2nd Edition came out as well. So the main thing that you should pull away from all of this is that this game system has been used multiple times. And it is a successful game system. Um, so that's one of the cool things. The age and the fact that it is still around, still being talked about. There's a revised edition of Shogun. Go ahead and hand it over. Uh, a revised edition of Shogun that's coming out from Queen Games, I believe, this year. This is the uh, big box version of it. And it is basically Wallenstein, but it has a medieval Japan theme wrapped around it instead of Germany. That That is the long and the short of it. Now, that does bring in some differences in play because... This, the, the map is a different size. The provinces are different sizes. Um, there, there's differences in all of that kind of stuff. But if you've played Wallenstein, you've played Shogun. Just that there's differences in the map and there's uh, maybe a couple of differences in gameplay. Hmm. But by and large, it's, it's generally the same game as Wallenstein. Uh, Dirk Hen was the designer. Michael Menzel is the artist. So... He's one of the OG artists, really good. Um, not one of my favorite, but still, I don't have anything to complain about with his artwork. It's still very good. So, one of the coolest things that Shogun did was it brought in this battle mechanism called the Cube Tower. Mm. And we're going to actually build it. Um, so, go ahead and go to... Um, uh, go, yeah, you can go over there. That's fine. Um, what did I do? Click that X. Go over here to that one. All right. So, um, good deal. We'll have to crack it and let you know. Yes, <laughs> one box. Uh, Jesse, you just need to find the heavy game that's interesting enough to you that you play it until you enjoy it. Maybe. There you go. The problem is I get to the heavy games and I'm like, I don't enjoy it. I don't want to try this again. It's above my level. I don't want to do it. All right, so uh, go ahead and go to camera two. Camera two. And that, yep. So here we have uh, Shogun. I'm going to have to back out a little bit because this is a bigger box. So let me do that. There, that should be good. Move it down. Maybe a little bit more. And then let's make sure we're still focused. Good enough. Nuno says he's heard about that <coughs> dice tower and would like to see it. Well, it's a cube tower. Cube it's not tower. a dice tower. It's a cube tower. 
So um, you don't put dice into it, you just put cubes. Cubes represent your different units. There's always going to be... Pardon me. Excuse you, darling. All right, so here is uh, Shogun. So uh, Shogun, I'll show you the uh, rule book first, as always. And again, Queen Games usually does a pretty good job with rule books as far as how it's laid out. I can't really speak uh, to ones that I have not read personally, but they usually do a, a decent job at the rule books. Uh, um, but I, I haven't read all of their rule books. So the ones that I have read, not bad. There's a little picture of the cube tower, and uh, that gives you a little bit of uh, foreshadowing. So we have some different um, uh, a game overview sheet that's here on the other side. And this is what the different player boards look like. So you're basically going to be laying out cards that you're going to be doing at these different places, and the cards will represent the provinces that you're going to carry this action out in. Mm. And uh, so you have one side that is kind of um, your person. Uh, the other side is what you're going to be doing on all that kind of stuff. So uh, it gives you a little bit of difference there. Also, I think you're, you're choosing player color <laughs> by these different things as well. So, David says, my wife hated Vinhos. Vinhos, yeah. Vinhos, the first three times she played it, then she won, now she loves it. <laughs> That's not okay. <coughs> All right, so. Oh my. You have two different boards. I believe this is for player count. One side is for, oh gosh, I can't remember. What, What's the other what side it's, look like? The other side looks like, you know, it's the same board. I think this is the higher player count over here. I can't remember where it's shown, but there is a difference in player count on one side of the board to the other. So here's the board. So as you can already tell, the it's kind of an elongated board. It's not more of a, a, a square board um, like you had with Wallenstein. It's kind of just uh, longer. Um, that's the best way to put it. So we'll keep at least part of that out. So you Tim can see asked, it. is it good card stock or flimsy? Uh, the board? Super thick. Yeah, the, the board is actually, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty, pretty dense. Um, uh, now, if you're talking about these, are the these, it's also, the, these are, you know, they're pretty. They're pretty uh, dense as well. Not as dense as the board, of course, but uh, the cardstock of those is good. Um, this is also it's good cardstock as well. Yeah. Um, this is going to be some of um, the units. Like now, these are just wooden cubes. You also have some discs in here for other things. Um, but these are your units, basically. Card stock on this is also pretty good. It's not the best, but again, you got to remember that this game is uh, almost 18 years old. So, I mean, they're still pretty good. They're not bad. Not bad at all. Tim was asking about the player boards. The player boards, yeah. They're not flimsy, no. but they're not uh, super they're not thick like either. Thick. They're not the board. Um, so... You have those things. You have different player colors, of course, as, as these things show. And get this out, and this, and you have other things that are in here as well. Like you have some riot, you know, revolt tokens. The uh, game, uh, the cube tower is usually seeded with a number of green tokens, uh, green uh, that, that act as peasants or people that could fight for or against you. Um, there are these uh, treasure cubes that kind of look like treasure chests. These are all just made out of wood um, that are pretty cool. Um, and then there are these cardboard tokens that just stand for different kinds of monuments. 
um, that are in the game as well that you can build in your provinces. Score you more points. Here are more cards that uh, you can have. Got it. Um, and there's two. So a whole bunch of different province cards that go into the game as well. Uh, there's also a uh, black player here as well. So that is that you do have different color of things out here as well. So it kind of gives you a, a like shot at color. all of the different all of the different components. And as you're looking at it, the the you can this is this component tray you can just pull out. You don't have to uh, uh, do you know have different things. So that's, that's another nice. cool thing that uh, came into it. So this is the cube tower, and I don't know if you can see down into it. You can, where it has different uh, uh, levels the, of each of these different uh, um, these different levels have different holes in them. See. Mm -hmm. And so when you dump, uh, see, as you can see in there, mm -hmm. it has different levels, so they don't always match up. So when you dump tokens or, or cubes into this tower, they're going to get hung up on different uh, levels. And when you dump more in, for example, so this thing is going to go in here like this, and it just kind of sits there. Let me get it flat. And then... You have, am I going to be able, yeah, I will, okay. Then you have this that just kind of sits on top, and this actually also has the divider in it. I don't know if you can really see it that well, um, but it has a divider here and uh, with four springs. So when you drop things into the top of the cube tower, um, for example, you know, you have, let's say you, you seed it with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's, so... This just kind of goes in there. Some came out, eight went in, but only four came out. So that means the four got stuck up in there somehow. So when you are going to say, let's say that red is fighting against yellow for some something somewhere, and red's coming in with, with four, and there are you know three yellows in that province. So you're gonna take all those, and you're gonna dump them in and see what comes out. All right, and depending on what's what, this one could count for the yellow or the blue mm. or the red, and and whoever has the highest will win that win that battle. And that's a really arbitrary kind of uh, explanation about how this works. But you'll notice that not all of the reds came out either. Right. Not all the reds. Not so all now reds red is coming in with just two or maybe just three, and now they're going to. Uh, dump their stuff in there and it was a wash because two and two came out mm -hmm. so but then you'll, you'll notice that some of those cubes are still stuck in there so mm -hmm. it's a really neat mechanism if the uh if the ones that are if the cubes that come out aren't involved in the battle they just come out mm -hmm. they don't affect the battle or anything like that but these little guys can go in and 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 keep coming in and that kind of see the two the, the two yellows mm -hmm. that i just threw in there didn't come out so it was just a really neat mechanism that I thought was really cool. I've always enjoyed that that cube tower mechanism. Now, one of the things about the game, though, is that you do have to play on a table mm. that doesn't get jostled very much because right, right. if this jostles, That'll put people, it'll yeah, put yeah. it'll put people out, and that messes up the cube tower mechanism. So that is kind of a downfall, I guess you could say, of that. But. Okay, that's everything. So that's what that's the neat. cube tower mechanism, that's usually how it works. That's so um, I just thought that was an interesting thing. But this is Shogun, and like I said, Queen Games, I believe, is uh, doing a revision of Shogun with some... Um, uh, I, don't, I have not... I've only seen, like, the... Uh, 
I've only seen the uh, advertisements. I really haven't looked into it, but I thought that, that that's pretty cool that they're coming back and they're doing a revised edition of Shogun. Yes. This has always been my favorite version of the game. The the Germany board just was dry. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was back when everything was about Germany. Um, it's kind of like, you know, disaster movies always happen in New York or L.A. I mean, valid. I mean, so it's like everything was coming out with Germany, Germany this, Germany that. And I don't mind Germany, don't get me wrong. But when Shogun came out and it was about medieval Japan, I was like, now, hey, that's pretty cool. No, that was neat. So. Uh, Tim says, I like the insert. It seems better than most. Yep. <laughs> and Nuno says, that is original. Weird nobody else used that mechanism. Uh, it was used by a couple of different... Um, <coughs> now that you've said that, I know that there were other games out there that did use that, oh, the, so cube, the cube tower mechanism, but I just don't... I can't put my... Uh, can't put my finger on which ones they were, but there were a couple of different games, and I'm not talking about just Wallenstein or just uh, this one. It might, maybe they copyrighted it. I don't know. I don't think it's they. Neat. I don't I, think you can copyright the, a mechanism, but oh, I think you could. But I like the way that some come out and some don't. It's not just like putting in. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. But um, the insert is really nice now. You do have to pack this stuff because th this this doesn't come with a lid. So you do have to pack these things in first and then make sure that uh, everything is flat. Everything is flat. Oh, crud. I put those in the wrong. Pooper duper. Matthew Vinson says, I think El Grande is one of them. Yes, there you go. That is that is that is correct. El Grande did use uh, the cube tower as well. Thank you, Matthew, for mentioning that. All right, but these are going to go back in here like this. And then this has to go back in. Come on. There we go. All right. And Timon is here. Timon, hey, hey, hey. Says hi. The Dark Tower remake as well, yes. Did the Dark Tower remake do it? Ah, really? Return to Dark Tower? I know it had the huge tower, but I guess, yeah, it is, because you drop it in the top. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. David says, I don't think El Grande has the random dispenser aspect to it. It just hides the total. Ah, okay. All right, so that kind of... Um, this... I put these down here to kind of hold those in place, and um, I might even do the same thing here to hold those, but then this goes on top to kind of hold that stuff in place. This holds everything else in place, and then those cards there are in a bag. So that's how that kind of goes, and then I put these just kind of in here like this so that it holds that stuff yeah. in place. And then the cube tower goes over here like that. And we're good to go. That lays right on top. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm. this, is, this, is, this is a little wonky. So that can go there. Can it go over there? No. Well, yeah, it could. It could go here. Yeah. It doesn't need to, though. But usually I just had everything sitting right on top there. Then that lays pretty flat. Hmm. Then these go in here like this, and the board. Uh, so, a little bit of lid lift, but not a whole lot. Nice box fart. I swear, this is a good box farting box. So there you have it. Round a little bit, pull everything out, and you can see that these do move around a little bit. Mm -hmm but not enough to where it absolutely it messes up everything around. It just shuffles over a little bit, but it's a little bit, it could be a little bit tighter, but in there, but it isn't. But that Shogun. Tim Price has a question for you. I see the Texas sticker. Yeah. I am in Tyler, who's from Texas. Not me. I'm from Texas. I'm from San Antonio. Um, that's where my 
That's where my family's from. Uh, my dad was Air Force, so we did a lot of moving around, but I was born and raised in, in uh, Texas. And then? Uh, Frostpunk. Frostpunk uses a cube tower? I didn't know that. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, that might not be what they're talking about. Yeah, it's got to be. Like, that's got to be. Wasn't anything yeah, else. because that's right after all of that kind of stuff. El Grande, Frostpunk, Return to Dark, Dark Tower. Okay, that's cool. I made my tea too hot. And I can't drink it. Really? Yep. I'm it's sure just been could. sitting here holding out. Oh, it's hot. Holy Moses. <laughs> really? You're like yeah. melting the cup. I, it is a plastic cup, so. Jeez Louise. Yeah, That's probably it's not the best idea. Yeah, but I like the size. Have some some of those plastic chemicals. Mm -hmm. getting into but your I water. like the size. Okay. And I don't want to be one of those people with a big old Stanley big old mug. metal Stanley mug. So or the loop. The loop. I thought I played the loop. Can I you go to board game? I thought. Uh, um, I thought we played it at JT's house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, nope, that's not right. Uh, um, there? Robin Hood Shogun. Here, no, no, no. Yeah, right there. Now, type in the loop. If it's the one I'm thinking about, yeah, go to 2020. It's the one I'm thinking of. Yep, it is. I didn't, I didn't even know that had a... Yeah, we've played that before. Okay. Oh, yeah. maybe I didn't play it. Okay, well, all right. Yeah, I guess, no, I think you did. Because what Kinda that does is it this. randomizes where those red cubes come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That's I a do little this. bit different than a cube tower. That just, I mean, if you count that, then you also have to count uh, Restoration Games, Cur uh, Fireball Island. Oh, yeah, I like Fireball Island. And the Curse of Old Car, because that, you, you, you put the... You don't know the where stuff, and you don't know where they're going to come out. You don't know where the lava the is going to come out. The cube tower here. The difference here is some of the pieces don't come out, so it yeah, just ends yeah, up yeah. hidden. It doesn't. It stays up there. It doesn't. It doesn't stay. So I guess I get it. Yeah, that is a cube tower, but it's not really the same kind of implementation as what I think really made uh, Shogun uh, uh, that innovative combat mechanism. Uh, that's there. But yeah, no, I, I do, now that I looked at it, I do remember that, but that's not really a, that's not really a cube tower, that's more of a, in, in, in the same sense that Shogun has. Um, but no, I get it. Cool. All right, go back to uh, live streaming. Um, oh, Doug is here, collecting water samples in Kettle Falls today. Mm. Great to join you for a few minutes. These look intriguing. Lots of games with cube towers, but not all of them catch the cubes. And that's the delineation I right think there. that was the difference, is that one kept some in there. Yep, yeah. kept, kept some yeah. in, and, and they'll come out when you don't expect them to come out. And and, and sometimes they don't come you'll out. go in, you'll go into a battle hoping that, that, that some of these pieces, are some of these come pieces come and help you. Um, and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you, mwah, mwah. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. Uh, is Shogun your favorite area control game? I wouldn't say that. Um, because I, I think Blood Rage, while it's a, uh, it's not just an area control game, I think it is, it has that mechanism. So, um, I wouldn't say that it's my favorite, but it's definitely up there. Mm. It's one of my favorites. Um, uh, but yeah, that, 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 uh, works out really well. All right, um, let's see here. Is it good card stock or flimsy? We already answered that. The player boards, don't forget to drop to drop the cubes in the tower. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I did. Uh, I think El Grande is one of them. Yeah. I think so, too. Um, let's look up El Grande as well. Come on, show me the cute. Yep, there it is. Oh, that's somebody. Yeah, that little thing. 
I wonder if the... Uh, I don't think that's the same either. For some reason, I'm thinking that the cube tower in there, it's just holding them. I don't recall. Oh. I think you just drop your cubes into that tower, and whoever has the most gets a bonus or something like that. I can't remember. Hmm. I don't recall. Somebody else in the chat is going to uh, remember better than I am. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't think these hold them and then some come out at some different time. But yeah, that's a very interesting mechanism. Yeah, it is. When are you comparing Blood Rage to Inish? I don't know, David. Why don't you do it? Wow, snarky <laughs> much. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, my hands are all warm now from my tea. Mm -hmm. Which I still can't drink. I haven't had a um, sip through the whole thing. When are you going to compare Blood Rage and Inish? Well, I got to get Inish back to the table, uh, honestly. But because uh, I haven't played Inish in a in a very long time, in a very long time. As a matter of fact, it was a it was a uh, it was a Dice Tower retreat. I think one of the first Dice Tower retreats that I played Inish the last time. Uh, there was nice. uh, there was a there was a couple from Ireland that were there. Oh, that's fun. And they wanted to play Inish. And, well, actually, it wasn't a couple. It was a group. A group of friends from Ireland that uh, that wanted to play. Nice. One God 777 $5. Thank you, sir. <gasps> Thank you very much. Time to drive the bus. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Thank you for being Be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, stay safe on those roads. It's precious cargo. Uh... Wow. It's just the more I think about it, I don't know how similar those two are. Are they? Are they I mean, not? I mean, there's there's card drafting. Um, there is area control. There's different kinds of card play, but <laughs> it's different. It's, it's not really the same. Tim so, has one of my favorite observations. I did not like Blood Rage, but I blamed the group that I was with. <laughs> well... That can definitely have an effect on how here's, you enjoy that Here's moment. the thing, Tim. Tim, uh, if you can, take a few moments. I know you're restricted with how many, how many characters you can put. But explain why you blame the group that you were with. Um, but Tim says people can make or break a game, and I totally agree. Yes, I agree with that. So I'm, I'm, that's why I want you to explain it a little bit more why... Did you do that? Was it your first time playing and there were a couple of people who were very well versed in the game and or did you all not know how to play the game and you're all kind of learning together? What kind of situation was it? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, Nuno asks, have you guys played Dragon Castle or is it not your kind of game? Uh, I don't have Dragon Castle. I think Jess would... It's a very spatial-oriented game. It looks okay. like Mahjong huh. a little bit. It looks like. It doesn't right, right. play like Mahjong. Right. But it looks like Mahjong a little bit, and it's really picturesque. Really, oh. I don't have it, though. So um, we we could play it, but... Well, we'll try you to did play the Tripoli playthrough, so I'll give you a pass for <laughs> now. <laughs> That's a game that I want to play with Jess. I, I think she'll be able to grasp it. And uh, I think she might enjoy it. I don't know. It might be a little too militaristic and deterministic, though. Blood Rage is aptly named. If you go in knowing you're supposed to rage, it's fun. It makes sense, if that makes sense. That is true. Uh, let's see. People can make or break a game. Okay, well, I already said that. I'm still waiting to hear back from Tim. Uh, it was poorly taught to me. Ugh. And then there were two alphas that basically ran the game for me. It was mine and another person's first time. Wait. Did yep. I call it? Yep. Did I call yep. it? Yep. I absolutely called it. Yep. That is exactly what happens. When people teach other people how to play Blood Rage, they need, and it's really hard for people that love playing Blood Rage and doing it competitively, it's really hard for them to do this, but they really have to take a step back and not try to win. Still do good. Still do, 
you know, still show people how the game is played, but don't just do it to try to win. And that's really hard to do for people that really enjoy playing Blood Rage oh, yeah. and, and uh, really enjoy playing it competitively like that. It's really hard for them to do that because a lot of times, let's be honest, gamers like to see how things work and they love to make those things work well. Mm -hmm. And when you do that in Blood Rage, you stomp other people. Right, right. Because that's how the game's designed. Um, but it's designed that everybody's trying to do that at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you're all stomping on each other. So it's all mutual. But in your situation, you had two people that were stomping on the rest of you. And then running your turn for you, blah, yuck. Don't like that at all. So I apologize. Um, I, I, I love teaching Blood Rage. I, I probably that. like teaching Blood Rage to new people more than playing it against people who know how to play the right, game. Right, right. Because it does become very cutthroatish, mm -hmm. and I don't really like that kind of situation. I would much rather just sit there and play and show people kind of how all of these different things work, yeah, and watch the lights come on in in their in their minds as they right. understand. I'd, I'd much rather uh, do that. Um, Blood Rage is the only game of the trilogy that I don't have. Way to fail at life, Nuno. <laughs> Way to fail at life, brother. Um, I'm just kidding. You're not failing at life. You're doing fine. Uh, but no, Blood Rage is, is my favorite of the trilogy. Um, I have played all three. And uh, in order, it's uh, Blood Rage 2, Player, Onk, and then Rising Sun. If you are not going to play... Ankh with two players, it goes into a distant third. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, I don't like that melding catch up mechanism in the game. I just don't like it at all. Nuno says one day <clears throat> I will buy it, fly to the U.S. and have Sam teach it to me. Let me know you're coming. Or if we're ever going to Portugal. Let me know you're coming <laughs> and make sure Tim comes with you. <laughs> Bring Tim so we can teach him. So we can teach Tim how to play the game <clears throat> properly. Really, the game is is played. The game is best one. Or, with four. The game is won or lost. It's best with four. Absolutely, I will agree with this. It's won or lost in the draft. <sighs> um, you can do really, really well if you draft good cards. You can do really, really poorly if you don't. Um, uh, if you draft like I do, just on the picture, you probably won't do so well. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> don't do that. It's good artwork. <laughs> it's good. Wrong, I'm like, oh, this one's nice. I'll just but, play it. But uh, yeah, you've got to get those cards that have synergy with with one another. Mm -hmm. um, and really, when I teach the game, I I let people take their absolute time in the first stage. Right, read it. Read all the cards. See what they do. Try to see those cards that will work well with others. Because in the second and third ages. There's a lot of similarity to the cards that are going to be in second and third age. They're just going to be more powerful. So if you take your time and read everything that's everything that comes through your hand in that first age, you have a better idea of what you're going to be doing in the second and third age. Um, and so we usually just take our time. Uh -huh. It makes the game go longer, but I don't care about that because teaching games are always longer anyway. Yeah. Um, so, of my first game of Blood Rage, um, probably, if I'm teaching the game, it will probably take minimum two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to get people to uh, not min-max. Because people that min-max Blood Rage, that saps all the fun out of the game. Saps all the fun out of the game. Been there. Yep. Been there, done that. Um, Ankh has the best minis I've ever seen because I like Egypt mythology. Yeah. Yep. Ankh is, is, I mean, any of the, any of these games have great minis. Um, Rising Sun, Blood Rage, and Ankh, super good minis. Super good minis. Great, great sculpts, great miniatures, great plastic, all of the, all of it. Um... <laughs> When I first started, when I first was being taught uh, Blood Rage, Eric Lang was teaching me 
uh, Z and uh, Jason mm -hmm. how to play. And he literally took, trying to prove how durable the miniatures were, <laughs> he literally took uh, the mm -hmm. big fire giant yes. uh, and threw it <laughs> against the wall. <laughs> and <laughs> See? It's good. <laughs> Not broken. He literally threw it, though. <laughs> I was awesome. like... Who is this guy? <laughs> it's one of the first times I met Eric Lang, and he's like going off the off the chain here. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Beyond the Sun has area control on the planet board as well, but it's more of an engine building race. Huh. Liberation Game Design is here. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome, welcome. Any plans to do a live Blood Rage playthrough on the channel anytime soon? We could absolutely do, we that. Could do that. That's not he would a hard. Love that. that is not a hard thing to do at all but the the main thing that i would have i would want to get four people involved and so mm, we'd have to use shotguns because we only have two lapels that work well well we've got three we've got three that work well so we could position the lapel mics properly probably that's something we could look at but getting four people um uh, enters into some difficulty with uh, angles and stuff like that in here because I've only got two, two. I've only got two cameras, three if you count the one that's way up on the ceiling. But we, we don't use any. We hardly ever use that one anymore because it it doesn't have a very good zoom. And capability. and we have to literally climb up the ladder well, to turn it on and off and adjust it, and it's yeah. No, I can turn that on with... Or bring it down. Maybe we just need to bring it down. I can down turn that on with the app on my phone. But I have to... I can get it on, but then I have to go up there and adjust it and all that right. kind of stuff. So, uh, listening to you and working on some things on the expansion for my game at the same time seems to work very well. Wow, you're very good yeah. at multitasking. We're going to have to get that one out. Orange shall overcome. Ooh, right yeah, over that was on one of our lists to do in the next couple it of weeks. It is. So... Um, yeah, uh, that was really cool. Really cool. Looking forward to that one. I love, I love the, uh, historical theme to it. It's World War II, but it's, it's, uh, the, the, um, um, the Netherlands, mm. uh, liberation. Orange. Yeah, the orange. Uh, so it's, it's their, um. It's the story of how they, uh, the the Dutch resistance, of how the Dutch resistance um, <clears throat> fought without actually fighting. It's really cool. That sounds interesting. I can't wait. Have you played the Power Star Trek points. Away missions? Oh, I first, think it's have you? Too. No, I haven't. First says, can you do a? You could do a live play of the trilogy, Sam versus Jesse on Onk. <laughs> we have already done that. We've done Onk. We have played Onk. Um, Sam, have you played Power Plants? No. Have you played Star Trek Away Missions? I think it's area control too. Um, I think I played Star Trek Away Missions, but it's been so long I, I, I can't remember for sure. It does ring a bell, uh, but it would have been when I was with the Dice Tower. Uh, before, before, before I went, uh. Before I moved up here, mm -hmm. still want to try Blood Rage, but I don't really know anybody who has it, and my closet is too full for more games. So a live playthrough would be great. We'll do it. That'll happen. We haven't made our April calendar yet, so we'll make no, the April calendar. True. Get on that. It's true. Come we on. are doing. We are doing. Uh, <laughs> we are doing older games on Tuesdays. Yeah. Throwback Tuesdays. Throwback Tuesdays. But I don't know that that's old enough to be a Throwback Tuesdays. I guess it is. If it's older than any of our kids, it would be old. <laughs> Might be. I'm just saying. Type in Blood Rage. I can't remember what year it came out. I want to say yeah, 2015. It's almost 10 years old. I guess Not I'm older than our kids. Showing my age here. I wonder how many times I've played Blood Rage in, in nine years. I wonder. It's probably one of your top played games. I don't know. I do not know.
but that's a good one. All right. Well, it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, this is about, you know, in between about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. That's usually what we want to try to keep these two. Yep. Um, that gives, you know, about 30 minutes for each game and uh, about, you know, 15, 20 minutes of shooting the, shooting the bull. <laughs> so uh, that's about it. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. And uh, come back in a couple hours. Jesse and I will be cracking open a game uh, to play live. And don't ask me which one, because I don't know yet. I, I literally spent about an hour today looking at my shelves. What am I going to play? Oh, let's play this one. Crap, three players. Uh, okay, let's play this one. Crap, three players. Dang it. So I'm still working on it. But I am going to get it scheduled here in a little bit. Give us... Uh, I think we'll start at about uh, 2.30 to 3 o'clock. That's what we're going to do. 2.30 okay. to 3 o'clock. In a couple hours, we'll come back and uh, we'll be teaching a game. Uh, well, I'll be teaching her a game. <laughs> I won't be teaching anybody. <laughs> see, That's when he says that, I'm like, I get a little nervous. All right, we'll talk to you later. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Come back in a couple hours for another playthrough. Bye-bye. Bye. This isn't. I guess it is. Oh, <laughs> told you. <laughs>